Hello, and welcome to Conservation Skills in 10 Minutes or Less. This series of short, skill-based videos is brought to you by the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service's National Conservation Training Center in Shepherdstown, West Virginia. If you have a couple of minutes, pull up a chair and pick up a new conservation skill or maybe refresh an old one on topics ranging from fish culture to bird identification to stream restoration. Enjoy. Hello, my name is Matthew Patterson. I'm a course leader at the National Conservation Training Center, and I'm going to lead you through the skill exercise today. So what's the topic for today? We're interested in measuring stream canopy cover using a tube densitometer. So why are we interested in stream canopy cover? And what is stream canopy cover? Well, it's basically the percentage of the overhead area of a stream is occupied by the vertical projection of tree crowns. In other words, you're walking through a stream, you look up, is the sky obscured by foliage of some sort? And why do we care about stream canopy cover? When we look at some standard indices of riparian habitat quality, there are several things that go into those indices. They include the width of the riparian buffer, how wide is it from the edge of the stream, what is the basal area of the riparian zone? And what is the percent canopy cover? We had a previous video on basal area of the riparian zone, and today we're going to focus on canopy cover. And these go into those indices of riparian habitat quality. But why do we care in particular about canopy cover? Why is that important? Well, canopy cover, of course, provides nutrients to the stream through litter fall input. The shade provided by the trees decreases water temperatures, which is good for aquatic organisms because colder water carries more oxygen. And typically, if you have a lot of canopy cover, that means you have a lot of vegetation along the stream. If you have a lot of vegetation along the stream, that means you probably have some good bank stabilization and you're preventing erosion. So, what are some ways to measure stream canopy cover? There are several. You can use a spherical densiometer, and we'll have a video on that to go along with this one. You can use hemispherical photography, pointing a camera straight up with the canopy. Or you can use a tube densitometer, and that's what we're going to talk about today. So, here's a skill demonstration on measuring stream canopy cover with a tube densitometer. This is a several step process. In step one, you want to set up systematic transects along your stream reach with a random start. You're probably already doing some other stream habitat measurements like pebble counts or cross sections, and this might be part of that process. In this case, you want to space the transects two mean wetted widths apart throughout the reach. So whatever your wetted width is from bank to bank, you want to double that and space your transects out accordingly. Step number two, once you have a transect set up, you want to measure that wetted width from bank to bank, and then divide that transect into 10 equal portions. You can see in this diagram, the red lines indicate the wetted width, and then the red dots indicate those 10 equally spaced points along the transect. So step three is to place the tube densitometer directly over top of that 10 evenly spaced measurement points along your transect. And if you look in the bottom right, you can see how the tube densitometer works. The light, as you're looking in, is reflected upward so with the mirror so that you're looking at what's directly above your head. Step four is here you can see a view looking in to the tube densitometer. You can see there are two levels. You want to make sure that both of those are level so that you're looking directly up at the canopy. You can see in our photo only one of those is level, but down in the diagram in the bottom right, you see that both of those bubbles are level, so you know that you're looking straight up. Then in the crosshair, that center piece right in the middle, if there is vegetation there, you consider that a hit 
other words, if the vegetation is obscuring the sky at that one point, it's a hit. And then step number five, based on those 10 measurements along the transect, you're going to calculate percent canopy cover. Here's the formula. Percent canopy cover is just the number of hits divided by the total number of observations times 100. In our case, the total observations is 10. Let's imagine for a minute that through our tube densitometer, we had eight hits along our transect. So percent canopy cover would be eight hits divided by 10 observations times 100. And our percent canopy cover would be 80% for that transect. The last step is to repeat this. As I mentioned, two wetted widths apart for your transects repeat all the steps. And it's important to know that the accuracy and precision of the tube densitometer increases pretty significantly with the increasing sample size. So the more samples you can take along that stream reach, the better for the accuracy of this uh, method. So if you want to learn more about this skill or other skills related to stream habitat measurement, then I suggest you sign up for the National Conservation Training Center's Stream Habitat Measurement Techniques. And if you hang on after this video, I'll walk you through how to find this class and more information about it on our website. So thank you for joining us. If you have any questions about this skill or any other skill related to stream habitat measurement or stream restoration, or you have questions about any course at the National Conservation Training Center, you can reach me at the phone and email address provided here. Thank you. Your best bet for finding our courses is to Google National Conservation Training Center. Click on the link and then type in stream habitat measurement techniques. Click on the PDF. And you can see it includes a description, objectives, target audience, and down at the bottom, upcoming courses. Thanks. Thanks again for joining us for Conservation Skills in 10 Minutes or Less. If you enjoyed this video, please give us a like, or hit the subscribe button, share this video with a friend, or even check out one of the many other skill-based videos we have in this series. Have a great day, and always remember, the beautiful thing about learning is that no one can take it away from you.